What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle. Today I've got an NU match. Finally, Smogon has released the NU tier alpha and it's looking pretty interesting. There's honestly some pretty crazy Pokemon in this tier, but I threw together this team just because it looked like it'd be pretty solid to play with. I wanted to work with the Slowking and Steelix wall core. It's pretty damn solid. Um, so I don't really have much experience in the NU tier. This is actually my first battle working with this team. So this is against Oaken. I believe we have had a couple battles on my channel in the past, so he's a pretty good player. Anyway, let's go ahead and just hop into the battle. Alright, so I was kind of expecting him to want to lead off with his Avalug, so I decided to toss out my Allspark, which is my Rotom. So this thing's just Life Orbed, it has a Will-O-Wisp, and it kind of just Volt Switches and shit. So he actually ends up leading off with the Golurk. That is not good for me, because obviously you can't hit this thing with any electric attacks, and I don't want to get smacked in the face with a Ghost Attack. So I just decided to switch right into my Hitmonlee, who uh, is going to come in freely. He is just going to go for the Stealth Rock, which I kind of expected. I probably should have gone for the Shadow Ball, but I wanted to play it safe. But anyway, I'm just going to go for a knockoff here. Here. He actually pops open a berry. He does have the Culber berry, which reduces um, dark type damage, so he's not going to take really anything from that. Does less than half. And this allows him to go ahead and punch me with some thunder. It actually knocks me down to 25 HP, and I was like, holy shit. I gotta save him on because I'm looking pretty useful. I do have that thing for rapid spin support, plus I'm choice scarfed, and close combat just hits extremely hard, so I do want to save that. Um, then just predicting like either an Earthquake, a Drain Punch, or a Thunder Punch or whatever, I just decide to go into Rotom. He actually Drain Punches, not going to be able to hit me because I'm Ghost as fuck. And I'm just going to go for a Shadow Ball as he ends up switching into his Sil Valley. So this is an Electric type Sil Valley. I honestly don't really know what to expect from these things a lot of the time. I've never personally used one myself, but I figure my Steelix is pr in, in a pretty good situation to come in against this thing. So I bring out Hard. He's, he's Rock Hard, just, uh, you know, erect as fuck, as he actually ends up going for the Flame Charge. So I'm guessing he predicted that, although since I'm so damn defensive, it's really not going to do anything. As he gets a speed boost, obviously he was faster than me already, so, you know, it doesn't really matter. Over here eating some leftovers, and I'm in a pretty good spot. So I kind of expect him to want to switch out here. So he's actually going to to go right into his iceberg coffee table this thing this defensive motherfucker right here i go for the earthquake just trying to land it on the sil valley but obviously this thing is not going to take very much damage from that and uh, I don't really know what this thing wants to do against me, so I'm actually just going to stay in here. I know that this is going to give me a little bit of trouble, so I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to toss a Toxic on this thing, and uh, it'll make it nice and easy to take care of later. So I'm going to go for the Toxic here, and he actually ends up going for the Roar, I believe, which is actually fine because it's just going to kind of, it's going to stir things up a bit, and uh, I'm not really all that worried about it. So he does go for the Roar, he screams at me, and Steelix is like, I'm fucking out of here, bro, as that is going to roar me into Drumstick. So here I decide to make uh, a pretty interesting decision. Rather than just going for the close combat, I'm actually going to go for um, the rapid spin. And I'm going to go ahead and swing the old legs around pretty quickly and get the Stealth Rock out of there. The reason for that is because I do have a Moltres who can't really come in on uh, Stealth Rock too often. So I'm going to go for the rapid spin. And looking at the team preview, Moltres does very well against his team. He doesn't really have any switch-ins to a Choice Specs Fire Blast. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and get rid of those Stealth Rock as he finishes me off with an Avalanche. So... He's over there eating some leftovers, he is getting hurt by the poison, which is nice. And this is gonna allow me to just go right into my, uh, my sunburnt fucking spicy chicken. <laughs> um, honestly, I like using Moltres, I haven't used this thing in forever. With choice specs, it hits pretty freaking hard. So, I bring in rubber, rubber chicken out here, get some pressure going. And I'm just gonna go straight for the fire blast. Luckily, I don't miss it, and he realizes he doesn't have really anything he can switch into. Uh, the Avalug is toxic, and it's not gonna be able to be all that helpful. So he just goes ahead and lets that thing go down. And uh, that is pretty good news. So that's his defense wall out of the way. Now he is going to go into his Typhlosion. So I do have a, sl a Slow King on this team. It's not Paul. It's like uh, it's Paul's brother, kind of the smarter version of Paul, I guess. But he goes for the Sunny Day. And that's actually an interesting play there because that shows me he does have Solar Beam. But Slow King is already so damn naturally specially defensive. Plus, I threw an Assault Vest on this thing. So I'm able to take pretty much any special attack, even if it's super effective. So... He goes for the solar beam, summons the power of the fucking sun, and it's going to do less than half to me, which is amazing, and that allows me to just go for a dragon tail. I was going to go for a scald, but it wouldn't be able to do all that much damage, plus I, I wanted to kind of, you know, mix things up a bit, so... He actually gets dragged into his Wormadam Trash Cloak. This thing goes for a Quiver Dance, and I was sitting there like, I've never seen a Quiver, <laughs> a quiver Dance Wormadam, let alone you don't see Wormadam very often at all. I didn't even know this thing could Quiver Dance, but I do actually have Fire Blast, and that is four times effective, so that's going to take care of that thing. Go ahead and burn off his little pink beard, and uh, yeah, see you later, buddy. So that was kind of interesting. I wanted to see what that thing was going to go for, like offense-wise, but uh, he didn't get, to, didn't get to stay around for too long. So now he's going to go right back into Golurk. Um, he brings up the fucking Transform. 
Transformer as I'm just going to switch into Moltres here. Um, he actually makes a pretty nice play and goes for the Thunder Punch as uh, I'm actually going to get a critical hit here, unfortunately, and that is going to take down Moltres. I knew I would be able to take at least one of them after calcing it. It was a safe switch in. Um, I figured the sun was out and Fire Blast would just be able to fuck everything up, but a critical hit there is going to take care of... Uh, my Moltres, so that kind of sucks. But this does allow me to go right into Cacturn, who is looking like I have potential to kind of set up here. So I'm just going to start playing with some swords. I knew that Golar couldn't really hurt me, so it was a free swords dance there. As he brings in uh, one of the elemental monkeys, this is a uh, semi sage, I, I believe. So I'm actually just going to go for a sucker punch after the plus two. It is going to knock this thing down to its focus sash. And he actually ends up going for the disarming voice. I was kind of expecting focus blast, but he throws some hearts at me. And Thorny Tits isn't going to take a whole lot of damage from that. As I do go for another Sucker Punch, he predicts that. And he's actually just going to go for a nasty plot. So he's over there thinking some nasty thoughts. It's an evil ass monkey right there. That's actually fucking scary. Monkeys, monkeys terrify me. But anyway, I actually just decide to go for a Sucker Punch here, thinking he's just going to attack. Um, he actually does go for the attack, and that is going to take care of the monkeys. So that's pretty cool. He could have just gone for another nasty plot there. So it was kind of weird going for the Sucker Punch, but I just decided to play it safe there. As he's not going to bring out his Sil Valley, and I go for the Sucker Punch yet again, the obvious play. He predicts that, and he's going to play with some swords himself. So. There's all sorts of dancing with swords going on around here. Um, he is, uh, I actually predict him to just go for another swords dance, seeing as he attacked after the second time. I figured he would expect me to go for the sucker punch again, but I made the wrong prediction. I just went for the, I actually went for the grassy MZ, I believe, <laughs> about to bloom doom up on that bitch, but it didn't happen, so that kind of sucks, but I'm not really all that afraid of this thing, considering I do still have a full health, big ass steel st snake thingy so he goes for the flame charge even after the swords dance is not going to be able to really do any damage at all and that's going to allow me to go ahead and shake the ground under him and uh that is a dead soul valley for sure so down goes that thing kind of a threat out of the way i haven't seen an electric one actually yet so that's kind of cool. it looks pretty badass with the yellow on top i don't know so valley's a it's an interesting pokemon that's for sure but i'm over here eating some leftovers and steelix is in a really good spot here so now he's going to bring in the golurk Dude just rocking the big band-aid across his chest, I always thought that was funny, but he's just going to go for an Ice Punch, I don't really have any reason to switch out here, so I'm just going to go for an Earthquake, I figure it's probably like a 2 or 3 hit KO, depending on if he goes for a Drain Punch, so Earthquake is going to do a, a sizable chunk there, as uh, I'm just still eating some leftovers, regaining some health, and Steelix is just a fucking beast. With this wall core, it's, it's really hard to break considering I have such a strong special defense wall, and then just like the best physical defense wall. Plus Steelix likes to deal with um, Slurpuff in this in this tier. I believe Slurpuff comes in in fucking belly drums and he's actually a pretty big threat but Steelix doesn't give a shit about that so that's kind of why I brought it here but anyway one more earthquake isn't going to be able to knock it out but it's looking like after one more drain punch I should be able to finish off the uh the Golurk there so he is going to go for one more drain punch I'm able to live that punches me right in the fucking jaw but I got a jaw of steel literally and uh Steelix just does not give a shit about that as it was looking like it was kind of close damage here if he was going to be able to live it but an earthquake is luckily going to be able to finish off the Golurk there. So I know that he still does have that Typhlosion, which can take care of my Steelix, although I don't really have any reason to make any switches. I'm just going to actually let Steelix kind of just die here, so that way I'll be able to bring in my Slowking, who can pretty much just handle the uh, the Typhlosion here. So he brings in his last Pokemon. He does just go for the Flamethrower. It is going to melt my Steel Beams as um, down goes Steelix. So... Here, I actually just decided to bring in my Rotom, just to kind of be able to get as much damage as possible up on this thing before I have to bring in my Slowking. I know that I can take so Solar Beam relatively nicely, so he does go for the Sunny Day, unless he gets some crits. Um, shit might be, like, might be a little scary, but it's looking like I'm in a pretty good spot. So, I just go for the Thunderbolts, it is going to knock this thing down to red, and all I really have to do at this point is let Rotom go down, and then my last Pokemon is the Slowking. So, a Flamethrower will take care of my Allspark. It's named that because it, it like goes into shit like a Transformer and like makes things alive, like toasters and shit. I, I don't know. But anyway, I'm just going to bring in Not Paul yet again. And all I've got to do here is just go ahead and uh, throw some hot water at him. He actually ends up bringing out the Z-Power. I kind of expected it to be um, the grass one with Solar Beam, but it actually is just, um, what's the, Inferno something? Inferno Overdrive. So he goes goes up into overdrive as uh that's not really gonna do much damage to me slow king is just an absolute monster with an assault vest you are not gonna be able to touch this thing with special attack so i take that really easily and a scald is gonna be able to take care of the typhlosion so that was a pretty interesting match that definitely uh, a pretty good one for my first uh my first nu match back it feels good to be back in the nu tier honestly this is kind of my favorite uh my favorite tier just because there's so many options for pokemon and it's actually a really 
kind of I don't know how balanced it is right now. It's definitely going to change in the coming weeks with all the uh, tier changes and stuff. But for now, there's some pretty big ass threats in here, and it'll be fun to mess around with. So go ahead and leave a comment if you want me to continue with some NU, and uh, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more Wi-Fi battles, and I will see you later. Peace out.